Hello, STEM Nation. Jeff here, and welcome to episode number 69 of STEM on Fire, where we interview practicing professionals in the area of science, technology, engineering, and math to help guide students interested in STEM careers. If you like what you hear, please share with a friend. Now let's get fired up today with our guest, Owen, and I hope our chat will help ignite your passion towards a STEM career. Owen earned a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering from the University of Central Florida in 2006, and then went back for his Master's in Business at Georgia Institute of Technology in 2013. He started right out of school working in the sales world for a manufacturer's rep and is now works for Intel as an area sales director. Welcome to the show, Owen. Fill in any gaps and share a bit of your personal life. Hey, Jeff. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, I think, you know, that was a pretty good uh, uh, intro. Um, Graduated from University of Central Florida with an industrial engineering degree. And like you said, uh, immediately went into a sales role working for a manufacturer's rep, which actually was the Intel rep at the time in the Southeast. Uh, And I was based out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, with responsibilities from West Palm Beach all the way down to Miami. All right, Owen, thanks for that overview. And so you have an industrial engineering degree, and the the last thing I would think of is going to sell electronics. So I want to kind of delve into that in were you always intending on going into sales or were you planning to do, you know, something specifically with your industrial engineering degree? You know, it's funny. Um, so I, I started off college at the University of Miami and I was a computer engineering major. And, you know, I was at Miami for a year and a half and uh, just, you know, at one point transferred to the University of Central Florida. When I transferred, met with my new guidance counselor, you know, while I liked computer engineering, I didn't love it. And as you know, Jeff, the engineering discipline requires a ton of work, energy, and effort. Uh, so I went and met with my guidance counselor and was just talking through my passions and, you know, the fact that I like the engineering aspect, but I also like business. Um, and he convinced me to stay in engineering, but told me maybe industrial engineering would be a better route. So uh, I chose that. And then after doing some senior, pro- senior design projects some internships, I really just realized how much I enjoy being outside of the office. Um, in front of people and learning from others. And I couldn't tell you the point, but I just knew as soon as I graduated that I wanted a career in sales. And had I have known about electronic sales, I probably would have stayed um, in a computer or electrical discipline. But, you know, you live and you learn, but it all worked out. And, and some nation, listen to what Owen's saying there, right? You can you can pivot at any time, right? So he started out as a computer engineer, talked to his guidance counselor, decided he kind of liked the business side, stuck with engineering as opposed to going over to the business route. So let's touch on that a little bit, Owen. What what advantages do you think you have since you went actually for the engineering degree versus going down the business route? Oh, my gosh. My career would not be where it is without uh, the guidance of the guidance counselor and getting me to stay within engineering. You know, having that degree... Um, allowed me to sit at the tables with double E's, ME's, um, any engineering discipline, and allowed me to get this opportunity to work for Elcom, which was my entry into semiconductor sales. And I've had you know numerous opportunities since then. So let's get into the 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 manufacturer's rep, the sales side. What does that mean to be a manufacturer's rep, and how challenging was it not having any sort of design background and going in to try to sell something that maybe you, you didn't quite understand at the time? Yep. Um, so a manufacturer's rep, they're a sales force for hire. So, you know, we work independently with the big semiconductor companies. So at the time, our major lines that we represented were Intel. Uh, they had Altera in, in the Southeast, except for Florida. Uh, we had Intersil, Avago, who's now Broadcom. So we had major semiconductor lines that didn't have the the budget to hire independent sales individuals in a region for the you know the number of bodies that we had or people that we had in the market so they would use our our resource we would drive business and we got paid on whatever re- revenue we generated in the market um you know to answer your second question it, it there's definitely a challenge right you walk into an industry and you don't have all of the the foundations, you know, the electronics backgrounds, you know, uh, it was a challenge to me. And what I really had to learn is what were some of the key components or key selling points of all of the lines that I represented, right? Because I had, like I mentioned, all those different semiconductor companies on our line card. I needed to learn the value props of their technologies to at least get myself in front of the right people or engineers at my accounts to then you know, get the proper meeting and see if we can position technologies. 
And, you know, while that was a challenge, what it did teach me was how to work with a larger team. I think when you're in your engineering uh, school, you do a lot of group projects. And if you're unfortunate like me, you know, you may have had people on your team that didn't always pull their own weight. But you learn that you need to uh, work as a team. And I had to do that very early in my sales career just because of, like you mentioned, the gap in 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 uh, the discipline versus what was expected of me in the field. And by doing so, I always won as a team. And uh, that, again, has helped me in my career. You know, so you did go on for your MBA, your master's in business administration, but you waited a couple of years to do that. Why did you wait a couple of years and, and or why did you not go right on to your MBA as soon as you got out of engineering school? I don't know if it was a conscious decision. You know, your engineering school, I, I think I was in school for four and a half years. So I definitely wanted to really get in the workforce. And as soon as I hit, I, I knew I wanted to go back to get my MBA, but I, there was so much new learnings. I don't think like, my own example, but when you're fresh out of school and you get into a new industry, whatever it is, it takes a couple of years for you to truly feel comfortable. Um, and, you know, you can add maybe a, maybe two quarters on top for me because I went from industrial engineering to a predominantly electrical engineering field. So I wanted that level of comfort. And I think I waited just the right amount of time. It was probably five and a half years or six years out of school. And the reason why I say that is when I was in my uh, business school, I, I could just add so much more depth to the conversation. I had so many real life examples of case studies or discussions in the classroom. And um, yeah, it, it just played out very well for me. So, you know, sometimes I think my timing has just been right. So when you did go off your MBA, you're working for a company at the time. Did, did that employer actually help pay for your MBA or is that something you had to pay for all on your own? Yeah, actually. So at the time I, uh, Left Elcom and joined Altera and moved to Georgia. So I moved from Florida to Georgia. I think I was working for Altera for around a year when the itch got too much. I had to scratch it. And I sat down with my manager um, and my manager's manager and just told him, you know, that I, I'd like to pursue this with their support. And not only were they supportive, but to your point, they actually had the company match a portion. I forget what percent, but it was a portion and I'll take anything at that point. Uh, from from my MBA degree. Demnation, if you're thinking of going on to further ed education, but you want to get out and get some experience first, some of the benefits are that a lot of employers will pay a portion, and some employers will actually pay 100% of your, of your further education. So keep that in mind. And Owen, when you're in college, did you have any internships through college? I did. Um, I worked at uh, the Orlando Utilities Commission, so the lighting company, uh, in Orlando, I uh, was responsible for numerous tasks, but mainly just uh, laying out uh, their street lamps and new developments. So I would kind of through AutoCAD lay out all the conduit and where it was going to be and where we plant the poles. And then sometimes I get to go out in the field to actually see the job that's going to be finished. Like I said uh, earlier, that's where I realized that I much prefer being out in the field. Uh, at a job site than I did sitting inside of a cube working on AutoCAD drawings uh, from 9 to 5. But that was just me. All right. Yeah. And I agree, Owen, right? Sit, sometimes sitting in a cube, you know, is challenging. Sometimes it's fun. But being out and about, having flexibility is also something that's it can be very advantageous for some folks out there. Yeah. I think everyone has to find their own, what they like the most, right? Because I worked with individuals at that company that they didn't want to, they never wanted to go to the job site. And I was kind of the young guy like, come on, let's go, let's go, you know, let's go check it out. And so they would appease me at times, but they were very comfortable and to each its own. And that's the beauty of these STEM degrees is that it is very flexible in what you can do once you graduate. And let's circle back a little bit. So, you know, think of juniors and seniors in high school that are thinking like, I really like the business side. You know, I, I think I might want to go sales, so I should probably go the, the business route. But, you know, what we're talking about is, is going engineering route. So if, if somebody's in that situation, Owen, what would be your recommendation for the engineering discipline to, to pursue? I would say stay engineering. You know, again, I was at that seat and luckily someone uh, kept me in the engineering discipline. And now that I'm working for one of the largest semiconductor companies in the world, if not the largest, depending on the quarter, you know, there's so many business roles uh, within Intel, right, in, in, in Altera at the time. But having that engineering backing and and being able to at least speak the vernacular, of course, I had to grow in certain areas, but I had, you know, I took a lot of the core classes as well. 
it just helps. And I, I personally can't think of um, a better discipline to have if this is a, and if you were especially if you're going to choose some type of business or sales career. All right. Thanks for that, Owen. And we're going to pivot here a little bit and we're going to move into one thing that really has you fired up today. I think what really has me fired up is just the fact that we're a part of Intel or I'm a part of Intel and what's actually taking place in the, in, in the, the industry. If you look, there's transformation happening across many markets that uh, I've called on for my sales career. If you look like what's just happening in the, the wireless market, moving from 4G to 5G and the bandwidth that 5G is going to allow to consumers and what that's doing to change the auto industry, the change, the networking industry. I mean, 5G is the conduit that's changing the world and being a part of Intel, we're on the front row seat to see this transition. And then I mentioned the auto, you know, uh, I have half of the, of the U.S. in, in Detroit um, with a lot of the auto uh, tier ones are, are in my market and just seeing, you know, some of the applications and things that they're working on, it's just fun to be a part of. Uh, so what really has me fired up is that there's transformation happening across many markets and being a part of Intel, we're at the forefront of it, working with our customers to transform the world. So Owen, you know, let's go to an aha moment you had. Everybody's had aha moments. So what's an aha moment that you actually took and turned into success? I, this is funny for me now. It wasn't funny at the time. So, like I started off, I said I, I, I uh, started college at the University of Miami, and just to, to preface, when I was growing up, all I, the only thing my parents instilled in me was you're going to college. Now, what college and all that was on me, but you were leaving home and you're going to college. So I got accepted to the University of Miami, and I just went, and it was relatively close to home, around two two and a half hour drive. So I get there, and I'm very much an introverted kid, and you know, very focused and a year in college is no different than high school grades and everything, but I'm making a ton of friends. So my aha moment was my sophomore year. Uh, I was taking Boolean algebra, started off the year really strong. And I remember sitting in class one day and the professor says um, on the final and <laughs> I mean, I'm in the class and I had no idea the final was coming on. And I kind of said it out loud, like it was in my head, but it, the words came out of my mouth and it was like the final. And you could just hear the fear in me. And uh, <laughs> the professor said, hey, Mr. DeLeon, can you stay after class? Just like that. Not like, you know, he just asked me to stay after class. And after class, I walked up there and he goes, I'm paraphrased, I don't remember exactly, but it was pretty much, you know, I've never seen a student start off as bright as you and that star dwindle so much in a, in a, in a semester. And he goes, I don't know what's going on with your son, but you need to figure it out. And that thing just hit me like a ton of bricks. And, and really what was playing out is that I was just having so much fun. Like I really started to meet a lot of people. I was moving from an, my introverted self to an extrovert because I was making so many friends. And it was just a, I really got caught up in just the atmosphere of Miami, if you will. And I remember just there was probably the longest walk from class back to my dorm room. And immediately maybe it wasn't that night but it was shortly thereafter i transferred without my parents knowing without telling any of my friends from miami to the university of central florida and when i went home uh for that break i took all my stuff i remember pulling into the house my mom's like what the heck happened she, you know immediately thought i got kicked out of college uh and i just told her i'm transferring i, I got to go to a different school and you know I, it's an aha moment because i didn't at that time that decision, again, was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. That's pretty amazing, Owen, that, you know, something that small of a, you know, a comment from a professor and, and you actually being mature enough in college to make that decision to say, I have to get out of that environment, and you just made a drastic change. That's actually very impressive. Yeah, the time was based off of fear. Um, yeah, <laughs> fear is uh, a big, mo fear is a big motivator. Yeah, I think it is. If fear is a motivator or, or it can be a crippler, right? If you let it control you. And, uh, I just knew I had the university of Miami is a very small campus. It's around like 15,000 students at the time. It's also a very wealthy campus. So not only do I have friends, I had some really rich friends too. And, um, you know, the, they could afford to stumble because they just had the means. I needed to graduate. I needed to build something for my family. And uh, I'm just glad that I had that foresight. And yeah, and I took that step. Um, it worked out pretty well. 
Yeah, that, that's awesome. And this might transition right into the kind of the next flow here of getting through college. You know, when you're 18 heading off to college and you made some drastic changes in college, but what are a couple of things that you wish you knew when you're heading off into college for the first time? Yeah, I think it's the um, just the discipline. If I was to talk to my 18 year old self, um, I would really say treat college like a job. And what I mean by that is if I was to wake up in college on the days I had class or even this Monday through Friday and from nine to five, I was just spending my time going through my learnings, doing my homework, uh, really treating it like a job. Man, college is a breeze. It, you know, it would just have gone by so much smoother um, having that type of mindset. And it's really not that difficult because you're in there and you're thinking you don't have any time. And you look back at it, you realize, man, you had so much time. Uh, you know, taking classes Tuesdays and Thursday, having Monday, Wednesday, Friday off. It, it, it's just ridiculous. So, yeah, treat college like a job. And I think you're going to really excel if you do that. And Owen, we're going to move on to the lightning round. Are you ready? I'm ready. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Uh, growth and comfort never coexist. And a personal habit that contributes to your success? I think I'm an efficient and effective time manager. And a favorite internet resource or phone app and why? Uh, Seek and Alpha. You get industry news from people that think they know a lot about um, what's going on in the market, but there's some insights in there that's helpful. And a book you would recommend? I think Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers or Freakonomics from Stephen uh, Levitt. Owen, and with that, we're going to wrap up, but we're going to ask for a parting piece of guidance that you could share with STEM Nation, and then we will say goodbye. Yeah, my only guidance is um, if you look at what's happening in technology and the impact that it's having on the world, you know, that starts with people in STEM, right? I mean, people in STEM are changing the world, and they have been doing so since our existence. And so for anyone that has an interest, I'd say there's many different disciplines. Find something that you're passionate about and, and see it through. And if you do those things, success will follow you. I hope you enjoyed our chat today with Owen. Head over to stemonfire.com, subscribe to the email list to keep up with the latest happenings, and be sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast player and share it with a friend. Tune in next week to talk with Elizabeth, who is a professor in chemical engineering focused in nanotechnology. Until next time, I hope this chat has helped ignite your passion towards a STEM degree.